Let me show you like uh, uh, that with, with really one stroke of the pen, I can show you how different they can look. What if you have the quadratic equation x squared minus x times the square root of two minus one is equal to zero. Now, first thing you do is you look at this and say, well, wait a minute, this is really weird. I have a square root in here, but don't forget the square root is just a number. I mean, it's 1.4 and a bunch of decimals after. It's just a number. It's just exactly written as the square root of two. So first thing we have to do is identify what is a, what is b, and what is c. And what you're going to find out is that even if the coefficients in front of the you know, places in the quadratic formula, even if they're square roots, it works perfectly fine in the quadratic formula. Even if you have imaginary numbers as coefficients in this equation, it works perfectly fine in the quadratic formula. Just like if you were to have any fractions in here, it would also work perfectly fine in the quadratic formula. So A is just like it always is, whatever's in front of here. B is whatever's in front of the X, but the way it's written is you have a negative one here and then you have a square root of two. So really B is everything that's in this term other than the X. So negative square root of two, that's what B actually is. And then C is equal to negative one. And then of course we always write down the quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C all divided by uh, two times A. And so we can substitute in. The only thing you have to be careful with when you have radicals running around is you have to write it down carefully and do the squaring and everything properly. And so you have to just be a little bit more careful than usual. So negative B, the negative is here. The B is actually a negative radical. So we're gonna put inside of here negative square root of two, plus or minus. B squared, again, B is negative square root of two. So we're gonna square that, negative square root of two. B squared minus four times A, which is now one, times C, which is negative one. All of this lives under this radical here, and all of this is the numerator over two times A, which is one. All right, that's why I was telling you in the beginning, write everything down, then do the calculations in the next step. Uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier. So negative times negative gives me the positive square root of two. Then I have this plus or minus. Now inside of here, what do I have? Be careful. Negative times negative is gonna give you a positive. But then the square and the square root will basically cancel, so I'm gonna have a positive two. Negative times negative gives me positive, and then this cancels with this, giving me a two. Then I'm gonna have negative times this negative giving me a positive four, because four times one times one is four. And then I'm gonna have that radical living around this. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna have just a two. So then I'm gonna have the square root of two plus or minus the square root of six over two. Now I know you wanna start canceling twos and all this, but you can't, because this two is under a radical and this six is under this radical. So you cannot directly start canceling things. You only can cancel if you had a coefficient out in front of a two or four or something. This coefficient is one, this invisible coefficient is one, so we can't do anything there. And then also we think, well, let me go and simplify these radicals. Well, I have a square root of two. Even if I build a radical factor tree, I can't simplify it any further. Even with the six, if I try to build a tree, two times three is six, that's as far as I can go. I don't have any pairs. So I cannot simplify this uh, at all or this or cancel anything really, so I'm, I'm done. Even though it looks ugly, I don't like it. Square root of two plus or minus square root of six, all divided by two. This is actually the answer. And I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. You can't simplify it any further. But notice, we just identified A, B, and C. B happened to have a radical, but everything else was the same. We just have to be careful when we have radicals running around that we you know, do the right thing. So this is a similar problem, slightly more complicated. What if the quadratic is T squared minus two times T times the square root of two? plus the number one equals zero. So again, let's identify A and B and C. A is going to be one. B is gonna be everything other than the T. So it's negative two times the square root of two. Everything but the T there, that's what B is. And C is equal to one. And so you have to write down, of course, the quadratic formula next negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, radical goes over this, all divided by 2a. And now I'm in a position where I can write everything down. I can stick everything in. You just have to be a little careful. Negative b, but b itself is this negative term. So I'm going to wrap it in here and say negative 2 root 2. That's what negative b is. Then I have plus or minus, I have b squared, but b is this ugly negative thing. So I have to write it down to square root of 2. That's b squared minus four times a, but a is one, times c, but c is one. 
and this radical lives around all of this stuff. And then this whole thing is over two times a, a is one, like this. And this radical, just to be clear, extends all the way to the end, like this. Now what do we do? Well, we just have to be careful, that's what we do. We go and say, well, negative times negative is positive two times the square root of two. This plus or minus comes along. But here we have to be careful. And this is where we have to start really remembering back to the rules of radicals. Remember, we've done lots and lots of work with radicals. When we have a radical expression squared, what's gonna happen is, of course, you know, negative, this is a number, so negative times negative is positive. So we know whatever we get is gonna be positive. But the two is a exponent applies to the two, two squared being four. And this exponent also applies to the radical two, which means they're gonna cancel. So what you're really gonna have in here is you're gonna have this two squared being four, and then this term squared being two. Now I know that you all know that two times four is eight, but I want you to write it out so that you don't make any mistakes. If you start doing too many things in your head, you'll make mistakes. Then you have a minus four here, and the radical lives around this. And then on the bottom, you just have two times one is two. So again, this comes from two squared being four. This comes from the cancellation of the radical giving you a two. So then what do you have? Two square root of two, plus or minus, on the inside here, you're gonna have uh, two times four is eight. Eight minus four is four. So this is gonna be the square root of four over two. And then finally, to get it all down to business, you'll have two root two plus or minus. This is the square root of four, which is two over two. So two root two plus minus two over two. And you could basically be done there, um, but let's just go ahead and split it apart and uh, cancel things. So we're gonna write it as this, as being two square root of two divided by the two. We're gonna break it apart, plus or minus, then this divided by this, two over two. You could think of it as I could combine these back into this. I'm just going backwards. So I cancel the two on the top and bottom of there, leaving only a square root of two left, plus or minus one. So you can leave it as square root of two plus or minus one, or you can flip it around, one plus or minus root two. I'm gonna leave it as the square root of two plus or minus the number one. This is the answer. There's two of them. Of course, there's always two for a quadratic equation. Um, but the, the, the moral of the story, the punchline, the reason I'm doing this is that if you see radicals running around your equation, you just have to be a little more careful about what you do, especially the squaring operation, to make sure a lot of students will forget to square the two, and they'll just apply the square here or something. They'll do some variation on this, and then you'll get the wrong answer. All right, last problem. This one has not one, but two radicals as coefficients in the quadratic equation. So what if we have the square root of two times x squared plus five times x plus two times the square root of two, and that's equal to zero, and I wanna solve that. It's the same sort of story. A is the square root of two, B is five, and C is two times the square root of two. So we're gonna say that the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus b squared minus four times a times c, radical lives around this, all divided by two times a. Everything applies, nothing is different. We just have to be careful because of these radicals here. So we'll have negative b, but b is five. Negative five plus or minus b squared. So we'll have five squared minus four times a, but a is square root of two times c, but c is two times the square root of two. All of this lives under a radical, and then all of that is a numerator over two times a, but a is the square root of two. Two times a. All right, so now we just have to be careful as we do the multiplication. Here we have negative five, plus or minus on the inside, five squared is 25. Now here's where we have to be careful. We know it's gonna be a negative because of the negative here. Um, and then we have four, so let me put the negative sign here. We have four times this two, which is eight. And then we have the square root of two times the square root of two, so I'm gonna write that as the square root of four. Why? Because I can multiply radicals and combine what's under the radical. That's one of the properties of radicals we've learned in the past, right? We can multiply the coefficients, giving us this. We multiply the radicals, giving us this. Two times two is four. That's why it lives under the radical here. This is under another larger radical, so it looks even crazier. On the bottom is just gonna be two times the square root of two. So when we crank through this, what's gonna happen on over here is we simplify this will be negative five will come from this. On the inside, we'll have 25 minus, uh, let me just go ahead and write it down, 25 
and then we'll have minus uh, 8 times 2 because the square root of 4 is 2, so 8 times 2 is 16. And this will live under a radical, and then we'll have 2 radical 2. Now what is 25 minus 16? Uh, fortunately, that's a nice number, negative 5 plus or minus square root of 9. On the bottom, 2 times the square root of 2. So then we'll have negative 5 plus or minus square root of 9 is 3 over 2 square root of 2. Let me catch up and make sure I'm okay. So negative, um, let me just double check here. Negative 5 plus or minus root 3, 2, or I'm sorry, plus or minus 3, 2, root 2 on the bottom. Yeah, that's right. All right, so you could basically um, circle this as the answer, but there's one problem with it. And those of you that have been with me all through the radicals, you can see what the problem is. We don't like radicals in the bottom of fractions. We just don't. So we could leave it like that. I mean, it, this is the answer, but we don't want a radical on the bottom. So we want to we want to get rid of that. Um, and so the way you're going to have to do that is by multiplying by a square root of 2 on the top and the bottom to get rid of this radical. So it's ugly, but this is how you're going to have to handle it. Negative 5 plus or minus the 3 over the 2 times the square root of 2. This is what I've already been given, right? In order to get rid of this square root of 2, I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2. But don't forget, when you multiply the numerator, it's going to be this times this whole thing. So it needs to be distributed to the 3 and distributed to the negative 5. So what you're really going to have over here is when it's distributed to the negative 5, you'll have a negative 5 times the square root of 2. The plus or minus will come along for the ride. And then this times the 3 will be 3 times the square root of 2. So it makes it uglier. I mean, it does. And then on the bottom, you're going to have the 2 times the square root of what? When you multiply these together, you can make that a square root of 4. And that's why it goes away, because this is going to be a 2 in the final answer. So then you're going to have negative 5 root 2 plus or minus 3 root 2. And on the bottom, 2 times this, this is actually a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So you're just going to have a 4 on the bottom. Let me catch up to myself. Negative 5 root 2 plus 3 plus minus 3 root 2 over 4. Now again, I could leave this alone and say this is the final answer. There's really nothing at all wrong with that, but I'm just going to go ahead and split it up because I think it looks a little cleaner. So what I'm going to have here for the first answer is negative 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2 over the 4. Just choosing the positive sign. Now look what's going to happen is, is going to have uh, now you can add these, right? Because you have the same radical. You can add coefficients. So negative 5 plus a 3 is going to give you negative 2. Root 2 over 4. And this means that x is going to be equal to, when you cancel this, it's going to be negative root 2 over 2. Why? Because divide by 2, give me 1. Divide by 2, give me 4. I'm sorry, 2 here as well. So we divide top and bottom by 2, essentially. So you have negative square root of 2 over 2. That's one of the answers. And then for the other one, we're going to switch colors and we're going to choose the minus sign. So we're going to say that x can be equal to negative 5 root 2 minus uh, 3 root 2 all divided by 4. So what do we have here? We can again add these or subtract these coefficients. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 root 2 over 4. And again, I can simplify that as dividing, well, you can see 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2 and you have a negative sign there. So it's going to be negative 2 times a root 2. We just divide the 8 by 4, the negative stays there, negative 2 root 2 is the answer. So two answers, negative square root of 2 over 2, and the other answer is negative 2 times the square root of 2. You know, I told you there was plenty of opportunities to make state mistakes in these problems, and, and this is why I'm doing them for you. When you have A and C being radicals, there's lots of opportunities to make mistakes in the quadratic formula as you take the square root and combine terms and such. But then even when you get down to the answer in this problem, we have this kind of weird thing where we could have left it like this, but we know that because we, when we choose the addition and the subtraction, we can combine these like terms. That's why we went ahead the next step and wrote them out separately to get down as far as we could go. You could leave it like this, but it's more correct when you can actually break things apart and calculate the individual answers to do this. When you have uh, down to the point where you can't add or subtract anymore, you just leave it like that. Or if we can't simplify, even if we choose plus and minus, we can't simplify this anymore, so we leave it as one large fraction. So in this lesson, we did quadratic formula where we had coefficients of the terms that were square roots which is kind of a weird case. In the next lesson, which will be the last lesson of the quadratic formula, we'll have some equations where we actually have imaginary number i as the coefficient in the equation. So I'm going to show you how to handle that in the next lesson. 
learn anything at mathandscience.com.